Hey friends, it's Haley Burn. Welcome to my studio. You know, I'm always thrilled to have you here. So today I am doing a remake of an old video I did where I am going to talk to you about how to mix a nice, beautiful, melanin-rich skin tone. Now, I did a video about this about a year ago or something when I was very first starting my channel. It was one of my first videos and it is rough and long and the sound is not good and all of that, but it has kind of been one of my more popular videos, I think, because, you know, mixing skin tones of all the spectrum can be really difficult and tricky. So I'm going to remake that for you today. It's going to be much shorter, much better. Um, I'll probably delete that old one pretty soon off my channel. Um, but anyways, I hope you learn a little something today. I'm going to show you my paints. I'm going to show you my mixes. And then I'm going to discuss sort of just some general basics. That way you don't have to have every single paint that I have, but you can still kind of get your own skin tones as you like them. So um, this is just all the teaser you're getting. In a few weeks, I will have this full painting video for you. But you know me, I'm doing my acrylic layers and uh, the, the, the acrylic pores. So after the oil painting dries and I build a frame and then I pour the resin and blah 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 so it'll be a few weeks but I promise you will see this full painting in action I'm just showing you a little teaser today so anyways I hope you learn a little something if you do please hit that subscribe button it really really helps my channel and then make sure you come back for all the art to goodness thank you so much for being here guys Mwah! enjoy Okay, so as I said in the introduction, you definitely do not have to use quite as many paints as I do, but I have a large variety and I just think it's easier to use a lot of colors that are pre-mixed. That way I can just hone in on exactly the tone I'm going for. Now the general rule of thumb when mixing a skin tones is starting off with white, some kind of yellowish or brown, a red, and a green. And that is your most basic, basic mix. And from that comes variations. If you notice when painting a deeper melanin skin tone, I'm adding a bit more blues to bring back that deep color, but yet it's a warm blue. It's not a cool blue. I'm also putting in a bit more red to balance it out. I'm almost turning that blue and red into a deep purple. There's a lot of purple in melanin rich skin tones. I'm also going to be adding a bit more brown and ochre than I would for a lighter skin tone, whereas in a lighter one, I would be using more Naples yellow and probably a little bit more orange too. But really, all of these colors are used in all of these skin tones. It's just going to be a variety of how much you mix of them. So what I like to do is mix my first part and this is going to be sort of my medium tone for the most part and that kind of gets me started in the right direction and then from this I will pull a little bit here and there, make a little bit darker, make a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix in a few lighter variations. I usually like to start with anywhere from about five to seven baseline skin tone hues that way I can mix from there because you don't want to just use the few that you mix. You want to constantly be adding in, you know, bits of purple or red or yellow to highlight the individual areas of our faces or bodies because skin tones vary greatly depending on what is around them and what is reflected on them. Which brings me to this next one, which you're probably like, why is she making this thing that looks blue or green? I thought we were doing skin tones. Well, yes, guess what? There is some reflective light on the piece that I'm doing, which you will see um, in a few minutes. And on the, the cheek that is lowest to the ground, there is going to be a shadow that is a dark shadow. And then just underneath that is a slight reflection from, I think, the shirt or whatever that the model was wearing. And so there is a little bit of blue that is going to be shining up onto the bottom of our face. And trust me, adding these little bits here and there, this little blue moment is going to really make this painting have a new dimension because it's like, oh, what's going on over here? You're going to realize that there's something more than meets the eye just outside of what you're seeing. So although it doesn't look as blue as it did, trust me, when it goes on the painting, you will see just how blue it is. For the most part, when you are creating lighter skin tones, a lighter variation, you're going to want to add a bit more yellow and a bit more white, but you have to be careful. You don't want to add a lot of white because white will also sort of almost bleach out everything and just make things almost like kind of pastel and not very vibrant. So when you're adding white, add very, very tiny bits. A lot of times I will counteract white 
with some orange or something else to kind of be very bright but again tiny tiny bits I mean I can't even express to you I'm not even using enough to fill up the tip of my utensil here I'm literally smudging the bottom the tiniest tiniest of bits of paint just to sort of slowly change it because otherwise what winds up happening is you'll wind up with these huge globs of paint and if the color is wrong then you have to mix twice as much more and then you're like oh my god do I need to throw away this whole like ounce of mixed paint and start over or do I need to add another ounce to make it the right color and that's when paint wastage winds up coming in so a little tip for you just add the tiniest amounts as you're changing it up and now it is time to mix up the darker variations of the skin tones the one that will be more in shadow so as you can see I'm starting off obviously putting in a lot more of the raw umber and um, a lot more of the sap green and turquoise I love 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 this turquoise for making skin tones darker really for all skin tones but especially ones that are a bit more melanated because it's just it's very warm it's like a super warm blue that just just brings this depth and volume and we actually all of us have a lot of green in our skin tones you don't really think about it but green is actually very predominant in all of our skin tones so to have this turquoise it's like oh my gosh what is that that I'm looking at something about this makes sense but whenever I tell people it's turquoise they're they're floored they cannot believe it so that's something that I've learned to start incorporating in my skin tones and as you can see with the ones that I'm mixing some of them are a bit more green some of them are a bit more yellow these ones that I'm mixing are gonna be almost more sort of purple because like I said with reflective light and the way that shadows reach us we have all of these different variations within our tones all of the time so sometimes you are gonna get a shadow that looks a bit more brownish or reddish and you're going to get another shadow that's going to be almost green or cool it has to do with the temperature of the shadow and sometimes that can do with where you are in relation to your light source or the sun or it can also have to do with what is casting the shadow or how close it is to your face sometimes something that's closer is a harsher shadow it might be a bit cooler whereas something that's farther away maybe there's a little more light that escapes in it's a warmer shadow so you want to have a nice variation it's not like light medium dark no your painting is going to be flat you should have at least two variations of each one and then as you're painting you'll be mixing in other colors to bring those to be even more vibrant Alrighty, now that we have mixed up our beautiful batch of skin tones, it is time for the fun part. Let us jump on the easel. So, as you can see, um, I know you're not seeing my reference photo, but as with all of my latest paintings, this has got some very dynamic shadows on it. And if you will remember anything from your own art classes, I'm sure you will know that there's always going to be a little bit of a reflective shadow underneath any dark shadow. So you're seeing me start off in the darker area of the face with a very, very light tone. And you're going to see this green starting to come into play, or this blue, I should say. Remember that beautiful blue tone I told you about that we'd be using? Well, here it is popping up in this gorgeous reflective shadow. Having a very light tone close to a very dark tone really helps to create some nice dynamism in a painting. It really helps to make your figure pop. The thing is though, you want to make sure that the reflective shadow that is underneath your darker tone is going to actually be a darker bright than your brightest bright where the light will actually hit. Now what's going to happen is when it is put so close to such a dark tone underneath it's going to really pop but do make sure that it is actually a different paint mix, a different hue, a little bit darker and not quite as rich as your predominantly bright tones that will be coming in in just a few minutes. Hopefully you are seeing all of the variety within this shadow. I know at a cursory glance it can just look like a big dark swath, but if you'll notice I'm using 
the green darks, I'm using the yellow darks, I'm using the red darks. You can see a whole plethora because our face is not a flat surface anywhere. So we are constantly getting references from everything that around us. Everything around you creates a reflection. And so that is why our skin tones are going to have this amazing, beautiful variety and very, very slight pops of color, no matter how dark or light in any space. And here we are. I wanted to show you just a little bit of the lightest, brightest pops too, because showing that brightest light reflection right next to some of the darkest area is just going to make her eye really pop out in the area behind her nose recess. And that's exactly what you want to create a very three dimensional work. And you can see the huge variety in, of skin tones too, by having those two next to each other, just for this exemplary video, because if you think that that a skin tone is just one tone with a few variations you are very wrong we actually all have all of the variations in our tones it just kind of depends on where it's used what the shadow is casting what is around us casting other lights so i hope you have learned something today if you do think about hitting that subscribe button and please make sure you come on back i promise to have lots more artsy goodness for you every week thanks guys